Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Joshua. I'm from GoTo Financial. Perhaps more of you would have known it um, as Gojek, one of the right hailing company in Indonesia. And we are the financial arm of the Gojek. So as you might be aware, um, I would like to start with an, a sincere apology that I couldn't join the, the fun and festivities of, of Cube Day Australia this year because of, of a visa issue. So I would like to say first and foremost uh, and express utmost gratitude for the organizer. I believe that they have been putting great effort in making sure that the event happened and run smoothly. And I hope that there will be the the next chance for me to because I really want you to interact and collaborate with the Australia's Kubernetes and cloud native community. So I'm a software engineer on the infrastructure engineering department um, at the cloud uh, developer experience team. And then the team itself, I believe um, I joined the team on late 2022 but the team itself has been trying to build and ship the platform from around late 2019 or early 2020 so combining my experience and then the team's whole experience and then the the references that I studied on the stock I came up with um, I came up with the the the, the title of the talk um, how might you platform avoiding traps before it's too late so that what we have been encountering you all of the all of the catches all of the all of the failures that or perhaps the the things that we do right the that, that we think we do rightly could be studied could spark a discussion and then can could be implemented on on your own uh, platform and team okay so the first question would be why, right? Why suddenly that we have the 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 platform emerge uh, everywhere, articles, references, and then I th I believe that when I try to join the virtual KubeCon EU in twenty twenty, if I'm not mistaken, when on when on pandemic, there wasn't um there wasn't any there wasn't a track of platform, which I believe that. On, on recent KubeCon, uh, we have the, the platform track, right? And this is the way that we use to do operations and then provisioning infrastructure. There will be a team of sysadmin that needs to deal with, um, that needs to deal with a physical machine in and rack of servers in, in a room uh, that needs to have a air conditioner and it needs an insurmountable amount of effort to to do and operate that and then we've come to the phase where companies uh, offers their 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 another another computer uh, which what we would have known as the cloud companies which we could use and utilize without us having to deal that that very 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 thick of uh, uh, that uh, without us having to deal with so many things, right? They abstract away things that we, we do not need to deal with anymore. And then provide us with, with simpler operations and also definitely the, the elasticity, the, scal the scalability. But the question is, does that make it indeed easier? Because I believe that there are still even on on provisioning and operating on cloud there are still a lot of the things that we need to learn and also the following day two operations and this apply not just on a particular cloud this is only the, the picture that i could get but to, to all clouds right they have their own terms and abstractions and the time that the, the engineering team put on learning and working on infrastructure is the time that we are not building our business our features, our competitive advantage. And there are a lot of it from storage, from network, from compute, from security. And we used to, to defer 
the the team and the responsibility and who who's building the application and who's operating the application the services right and i'm glad that the community has come to a conclusion that it is counterproductive because for someone who's building they are they are being incentivized that they need to push changes they need to ship features and that will definitely include changes that might disrupt the system while the operation folks they are incentivized by making sure that everything is reliable everything is running and accessible to the user and every changes will have the chance to to, to disrupt the the system which is what they don't want and they don't they are not going to be incentivized right so we have we've we've come as a community to to this cultural shift the the Warner Vogels mentioned you build it you run it right so this helps to take off of some burdens of op steam and then for everything that the product engineer needs to 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 do on their services they are also responsible for that from building until operating and also pagers alarms and whatsoever but this still bears a burden on on the operations team because they need to to not just build the and maintain the infrastructure the founder lay uh, the, the underlying and foundational infrastructure but also to help the the product team in maintaining those right and then it might lead quickly to a burnout which uh on this phase usually we larson mentioned it as a firefighting phase where on the top left of the quadrant they 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 need to to enhance their operational excellence they need to make sure that that we have run books we have documentations we have set of standardized pipelines templates that people could could use and then that uh it it makes things run run better and then they have some bandwidth to to think what what could be done with a higher leverage both for the infrastructure folks and also for the product engineering but perhaps we are not that good as infrastructure people to to have more bandwidth and think of what is what could be done with a higher leverage because perhaps the 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 firefighting hell as mentioned is is our comfort zone we are comfortable with oh we know when we want to provision database we have what commands to run the hundreds lines of bash script and whatsoever but this is not scalable sometimes people when it's way beyond their bandwidth oh we need to hire more people and whatsoever but that's not scalable as the mythical man months mentions that to tackle this problem you've got to be intentional hence the birth of the platform and then i believe that for whatever it is we would be able to help more people if we ourselves are 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 stable for for whatever the the term is uh, either it's devops it is sre it is platform it's it falls under the umbrella of infrastructure right both the the day zero and then also the the, the day one and day two so uh, perhaps it's just a different kind of ships and we are able now to build uh, in 2024 let's say a uh, better ships with with more advanced technologies and we knew that platform isn't something new on on the google sre book it has been mentioned like 17 times and it depends on on every needs of of the team and the and the companies right because we we knew that let's say on when when a company grew when when a company is is the smallest they need to to iterate quickly to to check their ideas and then more engineer would that 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 ship features might have the 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 access to the gcp aws and azure console itself so that they could provision on them uh, on their own and then the the company grew they need to ship more features teams are being uh, separated to to different business uh, logic team and they're responsible for their own services hence the monolith to microservices and microservices is as we know it it is to tackle a human scalability and organizational uh, organizational problem not a technical problem right and then platform is is our way is is our answer to solve the human scalability issues of of infrastructure of devops and meaning that while some software can help to answer it is inevitable to address the human problem with a human touch of it 
which is we treat our users, product engineers, as humans, and then hence, as uh, as as most people knew, is that we are investing in a proper product management on what we are offering to to our users, which is product engineers. But all of these are the same, which we try to solve common problems all together that the product engineers encountered so that they could focus and invest more on, on the business logic and then making sure that the company grew. So there are perhaps some guesses uh, from, from my own, like uh, we are not in, in, zero in a zero interest rate phenomenon anymore so that we need to be efficient. We cannot just put uh, more money and more money into, every, into something that, is, uh, that, that won't give us back anything so we need to be more efficient especially in, in in infrastructure as well and then perhaps we we have more mature community and technologies we have cloud services that have exposed all of the underlying infrastructure on on their ui console and api we have made the platform or platform like kubernetes boring which is good right and perhaps as michael mentioned that names are just magic so the way we are tackling this, my team and my company, we are starting as just one column of of balance on when when people try to to order their their motorbike, and then we've partnered, we expand, we acquired companies. We, for the go to financial itself, we have acquired several companies like Payment Gateway, Point of Services, Landing and also a digital signature and then actually the first time we are trying to 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 platform was was to 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 save ourselves so this is back when we are trying to move from vm to kubernetes and hence we try to extend the, the envoy xds api so that the surface discovery this surface discovery could include the surface both on vms and also on the deploy on the kubernetes but this quickly became a uh, tech depth because we need to maintain it ourselves and we were just thinking why don't we use a more stable community supported features uh products like well, which is istio right but when we try to migrate again from 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 surface and kubernetes with non istio to istio we hit a roadblock that uh it's a steep learning curve for developers it's hard to update templates and people need to to learn um to learn on their own things that 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 is essentially not taking up most of of their time working on the migration task and we we don't know uh, whose services is whose services is which well, which services uh, is being owned by who so we did it in a guerrilla kind of way because both us the product engineers the, the infrastructure uh, the infrastructure people and also the product engineers kind of like have a common enemy which is because it has caused various um, incidents as well and we we do it um in 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 sort of like we we talk with lots of engineers we did some of the team members try to read the the ux research paper so that how could they they could comprehend how to get inputs from from users uh, in, 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 a, in a good way and then hence we would we are able to get buy-in from bottom up and and that's how we could get uh, receive and get the trust from from our users which are the product engineers now product engineers that they could provision services and deploy to the founder uh, to the underlying infrastructure without and, and operating it without having to deal with a single line of YAMLs. It is already on the golden path, paved road. It is the standardized and uh, it is already a standardized template with the best practices. And then uh, from the platform itself, they could also provision and operate various, various components, not just they are stateless. It includes stateful like databases and then they could also expose the domain domain they could when 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 they create application on the platform it also comes with observability like logging metrics and tracing or whatsoever and then 
the platform enables enables all of the other corresponding team to 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 offer their product suite without uh, the, the product suite to to the platform using the OSB, OSB open service broker so essentially i will i i think of it that platform is we infrastructure people we build products for our internal software engineer to essentially make their lives easier gojek used to operate in a very ad hoc way so it uses a it, it used a manual call center so let's say someone needs to request for a ride they call the call center and then people in the call center uh call another driver hey where are you are you going uh, are you able to take this and then they need to call the user again and whatnot and that's that's just a huge overhead right so it's it's the same when we productize uh, these kind of businesses and then we now apply this to to how we offer infrastructure and then this is the 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 state that we are currently i think have successfully um, operate on so the first one yeah, is definitely not putting a proper product management best practices it we, we, we try to discover the problem prioritize and then to validate as quickly as possible because it is it is it is expensive to, to build products right and then I'm like you could what 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 we were thinking when we tried to build a product a usual consumer product we can just do it on 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 how we are building our platform like whether you measure things or not whether it is being used or not whether you provide them with a documentation uh, videos on how to use it or not whether you make sure that they comprehend what what is the the, the platform uh being offering to them what will be the effect to their services whether we are gathering user inputs, feedbacks, we make workshops and whatsoever. So in our case, when for, for every new features with the new RFC, with the new ADR, we have all of all of us have already included like what are the things that we are going to measure, how we make sure that it is going to be adopted by the product engineers, the strategy. Is it going to disrupt the, the current services? And then people are starting with interviewing the, the product engineers, the users, and and how are they thinking about the, the potential of the feature. The second one is, turns out our users are not just the, the product engineers. There are also various stakeholders that the platform team is interacting and, and need to collaborate. So let's say the finance team would want to know why uh, why, why why is the cost uh, increasing in 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 these months billing right and then we have the security team we have the IT GRC team on on each of the product engineers also we have people that that the, the champions people that that we that they give inputs more more often and whatnot and and we need to to keep them for for every for every person as like like finance right they would Think that why does the platform team needs to be to have the the number of people? Why couldn't we just use these cloud service provider features? I mean, like open service, they would the the cloud service provider would have that features, right? Why why would uh, we we need to build our own? Let's say if if you're going to build our own, so I really like that uh, charity put it as the platform engineering is the ultimate glue work, and then Tanya mentions then in in having a glue work telling a story on what 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 uh what are you uh what are you working on why are you working on it what's the advantages and then the benefits of using it is 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 very important in in building it as a story and in uh, galo's blog post he he put it really really good this is also i mean like the the internal software engineer their software engineer just just like us right and then they they know what what they are doing. They they also know that the software, unlike the 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 Gojek call center, the Gojek call center example, the user might not know how to fix something on the application, right? But but on on building a platform, there is a high chance that they know and they want to scratch their their own itch. So we have 
we we need to cater their 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 hunger we we enable them not just the the security team and then the other stakeholders to contribute but, but also them we expose our products in various communications methods like api cli we open our roadmap and then we list uh, our issues which one that we are going to take and why as i think camilla mentioned that we have a very captive audience and for and it's 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 i think it's it's a pros that that we should utilize this is when we are trying to onboard the, the acquired companies to to our platform from their infrastructure and then we also pair and collaborate closely with them on how they could make use of the of the platform i really like this line from the peter because when we try to create internal tooling which which platform is a huge huge portion of it there's the corrosive psychological psychological effect that if we are providing something that is not good it makes people think the the software engineers like perhaps we're not that 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 capable as well in building in building software because for them oftentimes they they don't have the, the the options to choose right they they join the company and then okay this is the the set of tooling that we need to to deal with they can choose between oh i want to use the gcp one or the aws one or the azure one they they they, they most likely cannot do that so we need to be intentional in building and and communicating with them the third one is we are really easy in in in, in software landscape to to get distracted especially if if it on the infrastructure and then that's not our unfair advantage like there are whole lots of toolings and then on the previous slide charity on on the honeycomb with the honeycomb team they build their own db because the the honeycomb team needs needs that that's the unfair advantage with compared to other observability toolings for 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 our case we build our own logging platform because we are able to save almost half of compared to let's say we are using other um, logging vendors for the cloud we make sure that we host on our own vms and then we have the confidence i i, I really admire them that, that they mentioned we have the confidence in we have no lock-in and then we have the confidence in migration regarding abstraction this is backstage i think we as as most of you would have already aware and this is quote unquote just the the ui right they, they expose a whole lot of features but when we want to expose something as a surface we need to define it what what what's the the abstraction that the entities on the database on the code on how we are going to provision the, the operations uh, what are the operations enabled on the entities right and then i think what i really like as well that we have as a community we already have quite uh several toolings that we can use to to do that so if you can use other vendors and toolings i really encourage you to do that we are we are using argo cd and kubernetes instead of making our own we are moving from envoy to istio like that's i think is a really good choice of ours and we maintain our own our back which is painful and led to an incident once so if you have uh more money or or time to to exp uh, ex explore uh, other options that would be really encouraged because it is not it is not cheap to to maintain a product with uh with a whole lot of possibilities and combinations when we want to ship new features and then we want to to make sure they're the stability of the the product right so we just want to to expose one one feature of uh people could could choose their their load balancing policy but the things that we need to make sure the things that we need to test on our on our smoke test on our code that's just a whole lot a whole lot of it and we could learn from the product team uh, because they have been the one that is that is already adept and uh, used to 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 deal with these things right 
then we also have the 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 behavior to to rewrite something and then start something from the from the ground up and we need to meet in the middle from from our current boots not just the infrastructure and then product engineers workflow to to the one that we want to to introduce to them so when we create a a uh, when we want to onboard them to our platform they could just input for for example they could just input the the, the name of the running services on the Kubernetes and it will read all the metadata when we want to onboard the 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 introduce the patroni to their postgres we make them as as seamless as possible and not just on migration but when you're building the platform itself there's something called the Cynus survival platform platform is not it's not essentially it doesn't have it doesn't need to be a service catalog it doesn't need to be to be to be hefty to be to be Hack, uh, to to have a lot of features, a centralized pipeline, a template, uh, Helm chart template. I believe if it makes things easier and it makes uh, a standard, it is already a platform. These are also the the example of of a uh, combination of Kubernetes operator and CRGs. Because our when when we build our products, the product engineers definitely collaborate with the UX researchers researchers. And then they check what are the steps, the the pain points, and on which part that they need to to improve, and and they they could help with the applications. And I believe that's what we are also lacking in building our platform. We don't check from the product engineers what are the steps that they are doing, and in which one that we need to improve the reliability and also the time that we we could save for them, because it is it is it is engineering time is not cheap so so we need to make sure that we are efficient in 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 investing and spending our engineering time and we could check on on each of the steps that they are they are taking on on software development life cycles what are the things that that we need to to help them with with our platform offering we try to analyze uh, a, month, a a year of RCAs we check whether what kind of uh, incidents that, that is happening and why and then we try to develop a deployment preview features we realize that this is still in a backlog that it's uh, because we are on a fintech company that needs with that deals with pretty 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 important compliance for someone to to deploy their services they need to to check various dashboards they need to input different different things and that the takes up their time and sometimes people are 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 putting like a uh, huge commits to to deployment which is that cost that that could cause incident as well right and for them we need to make sure that we are we are equip uh, we we equip them with an appropriate tooling we we don't just encourage them to like okay you need to own your services in production but we need to equip them with what set of toolings, sets of documentations on how they could gain the confidence in in operating their services in in production. Sometimes we, as infrastructure team, when infrastructure department, when we are already separated into teams, we work on our own. But but we need to collaborate and integrate our product in trying to to tackle a specific. As DLC step of the of the product engineers that they are encountering and and the problems that that they face, we need to make sure that abstractions are there. It is it is trying to help us. It is trying to help them, but they they are not they they don't have the fear on when 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 they want to make use of our of our platform uh, new features or offering. We can equip them with the documentations. We can equip them with videos or examples of pipelines or running services in production so that they gain the confidence in using it and they also know why they uh, need to, to to enable uh, and and use the the platform features and essentially i would like to think that all of those things is could 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 be could be could be concluded to that uh, to to the to the one that we mentioned earlier so that we could just think when we when we want to build and and ship new features or platform whether we are building a product 
which we already as a community of IT we've already come up with with product management practices that, that there are a whole lot of it we need to make sure that we are aware our customers are are the software engineers what are the characteristic of software engineers what are they doing in in their day-to-day basis and we need to help them in making sure that what they are doing and their lives are are easier in in doing and excelling at at their job so i would uh, want to give a shout out as well because perhaps we are lost like what we are going to do we already have our own platform what what are we are lacking of right and the the working group uh, platform working group of the of the app uh, app delivery technical FSA group of CNCF puts up a a really good um, maturity model that we could use to to assess where our we are currently in our own state of the platform and what kind of things that that we could that we we could do to to improve but this is not like a a uh, a exact recipe per se like you need to for for all of the categories you need to to achieve all level four no but it's just that okay this is where we are at and this is where we could try to improve our our platform so i really encourage you to take a look at the both the white paper and also the maturity model and yeah um that's that's it i hope that it could be that could, it could be at least uh, it, it could be helpful to you or give some 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 ideas on what you can do on your own platform product and also team and i really hope that i could meet you all on the on the next uh, cncf events thank you so much